This story unfolds with an incident that happened 400 years ago. This happened to be a time when humans were at the height of prosperity. However, many of their hearts were filled with deceit and darkness. This darkness takes over the world and births an evil monster born from darkness. Several battles were fought against this monster, but to none were won, and this darkness that humans created brings the world to the brink of destruction. Before the world could be destroyed by darkness, a light breaks from the earth and another creature emerges from the light. The creature takes on the look of a man with attributes of a dragon, who has beautiful wings and a giant sword. On meeting each other, the creature and darkness realize they were enemies. Their fierce battle destroyed a lot of continents, and many human lives were lost. However, the battle comes to an end when the strange creature finally defeats darkness and it becomes victorious. The legend of this battle passed down from generation to generation, and as time went by the story changed into something different. The real legend becomes forgotten and the real truth changes from time to time. 400 years later, the city of Metalikana is attacked by the Dark Rebels. The Dark Rebels consist of demi-humans said to be followers of Dark Schneider. This army is led by Lord Osborne. The army marches to the castle of Metalikana destroying anything that stands in their way. Unfortunately, the king, the priest, and the knights weren't around to protect the castle. Just a few guards were left behind to protect Princess Shela. Lord Osborne desires to kill Princess Shela and take over the Metalikana castle before the arrival of the kings and his knights. The Dark Rebels break through the castle gate, crushing down the guard by the gate. Meanwhile, the princess is being protected in the cathedral by the surviving guards. In the cathedral where the princess is being protected, a young boy grabs onto the feet of a soldier out of fright. This young boy happens to be Lucian, the younger brother to a girl named Yoko. Yoko grabs her younger brother Lucian who seems scared. She offers him a handkerchief to wipe off his tears. Lucian wipes off his tears and he becomes calm. He asks his sister to allow him to wash the handkerchief because it got dirty while he wiped off his tears. Yoko immediately stops her brother from going to wash the handkerchief because Lord Osborne and his army were already at the gate of the cathedral. Shortly after the guards come to report to the princess about how strong the army force seems to be. The guard also tells her that the door of the cathedral will soon be broken down by the dark rebel army. Upon hearing the guard's report, Yoko flashes back to when her father tells her about a dangerous identity sealed off in Lucian's body. Yoko's father tells her that she can't use spells unless they were in dire situations and he wasn't around to protect them. She also remembers that she was the key to unlocking Lucian's other identity, and according to her father this identity can only be unlocked by the kiss of a maiden virgin. Due to that her father warned her not to know any man since she's the key to unlocking Lucian's other identity. Yoko's father tells her that inside of Lucian he sealed the reincarnation of the evil Dark Schneider. Suddenly Yoko breaks from her memory and doubts whether what her father told her is true. Shortly after, Lord Osborne and his army get to the door of the cathedral and his army tries to break down the door. The guards inside the cathedral try so hard to block the door and prevent Lord Osborne from entering. While all this happens, Lucian breaks down in tears out of fright that the Dark Rebel army will soon get into the cathedral. However, Yoko tries to pat her younger brother, then Princess Sheila notices both of them. Immediately, Princess Sheila sees Yoko. She walks towards her and tells her that she remembers Yoko's father telling her that he once sealed off an evil wizard away. She says Yoko's father told her that this evil wizard could save them from any disaster whatsoever, and that the key to unsealing this wizard was his daughter. Then Princess Sheila and her entourages start to beg Yoko to unseal the wizard. At first, she didn't want to do it, because it was embarrassing. But when the Dark Rebel army breaks the door and they begin to wreak havoc, Yoko has no choice but to unseal the wizard. Suddenly any evil aura is felt from Lucian's body and he grows from being a young boy into a full-grown adult. The reincarnation of Dark Schneider has been unsealed. As soon as Dark Schneider gets hold off of himself, he asks for the Great Priest. The Dark Schneider says he is going to destroy the Great Priest for locking him away in the body of a young child. After he finishes speaking, Lord Osborne sends his giants to attack Dark Schneider. He then gets angry and uses a spell to kill the giants. Yoko sees the amount of power he had and gets scared. She asked the Dark Schneider if he was still Lucian, her younger brother. He replied saying that he is Lucian and that they grew up together. Meanwhile, Lord Osborne is surprised at the kind of ancient spells Lucian uses. Then he declares himself as the reincarnation of Dark Schneider. Upon hearing this, Princess Sheila entourages begs him to save them from Lord Osborne and his army. But surprisingly, Lucian turns down their offer. He says he didn't owe them anything and that aside Yoko, everyone else is going to die there. After hearing what Lucian had to say, Yoko scolds him saying she's disappointed in him because she thought he was nice. She tells Lucian that they wouldn't be friends again and then suddenly Lucian agrees to help them. Lucian faces Osborne's dark rebel army and kills them in the twinkling of an eye. Osborne sees this and gets angry. Meanwhile, he happens to be the last standing. 
All of a sudden, thunder begins to strike around the kingdom. Osborne is planning to attack Lucian with lightning. Then Osborn uses his spells to strike Lucian. Surprisingly, it has no effect on Lucian. Then Lucian gets angry because Osborn scratched his face. He then begins to cast a spell on Osborn. The spell burns him into ashes. Then the entourages discover that they have won the battle through Lucian's help. Princess Sheila tries to thank him, but he walks out on her to meet Yoko. He then asks Yoko if she has anything to say to him. Yoko tells him thank you, and as she is about to tell him to change into another clothes since he was naked, Lucian disappeared. Later Lucian tries to leave the castle and Yoko runs after him asking where he is going. He tells Yoko that he needs to kill her father for sealing him away and then after that he would start a war and conquer the world. Lucian promises to kill whoever stands in his way either good or bad. But he tells Lucian that he would spare her since she's the one who set him free. Suddenly Lucian kisses Yoko and surprisingly the dark Schneider gets locked up again in the body of the young boy. The young Lucian takes over the body and asks where all the monsters were. It is then that Yoko realizes that the key to unsealing the Dark Schneider is the Maiden Kiss, the same as locking it too. Yoko and her brother Lucian then return to the castle. Kalsu discuss with his sorcerer Shoguns on the defeat Lord Osborn faced in Metalikana. He received a report that Lord Osborn was killed with a spell called the Venom Spell. Kalsu and his sorcerer Shoguns then decided to send Kevajubu to the job of verifying who killed Lord Osborn. They agree to send Kevajubu a Hydra summoner, so has to check how strong the wizard in Metalikana is. According to the legends, just one man was capable of using the Venom spell, and that person is the Dark Schneider. Kalsu decides that if Dark Schneider is the wizard in Metalikana, he would storm Metalikana with his full army. Kalsu promises to destroy Metalikana like the Kingdom of Judas, a kingdom he had just destroyed. Yoko is in a dream and someone calls her name in the dream. The person happens to be the other identity of Lucian, Dark Schneider. They are both in a garden of flowers and Lucian is undressed. Yoko is surprised to see the other identity of Lucian because she clearly sealed him back. She then asks herself if she's dreaming, however Lucian replies saying she isn't. He also shows her the body of her father, the great priest, who happens to be lying lifeless in a pool of blood. As soon as she sees her father's body she gets scared and screams, it is then she wakes up from her dream. Yoko gets up from her bed and she is surprised to see Lucian sleeping in her room, even though she has warned him not to sleep in her room. Yoko decides that it's because Lucian slept in her room, that's why she had such a dream. Meanwhile Kevajubu and his Hydra arrive that night, in the city Metalikana. The following morning Yoko and her brother Lucian were having breakfast when they suddenly heard the sound of a loud storm. Yoko then rushes outside to check what's happening. Unfortunately, it's a dark cloud heading towards the castle and immediately Yoko had a bad feeling about it. Yoko's father joins them outside to see the cloud. Lucian then asks him what the cloud means. He tells them that the cloud is a bad omen and that they have to go to the castle immediately. Yoko's father whispers to himself that if things eventually go south, he might have to rewaken the Dark Schneider. At the castle the king receives news about the fallen Judah's kingdom. A guard from the kingdom had come to inform the king. He also added in his report that they were attacked by demi-humans and monsters. The ministers are surprised to hear that King Glenn, the king of Judah's kingdom, was defeated. The guard also informs the king about the dark army closing in on them. Amidst their conversation, the great priest enters. He tells the king that what the guard says is true, and the dark cloud is a result of the evil wizard closing in on the palace. The king recognizes Yoko and thanks her for helping him save the castle while he was away. Princess Sheila then thanks Lucian for saving her when Osborne attacked, but Yoko tells her not to worry since Lucian couldn't remember all that happened. Then the king realizes that Lucian is the boy that serves as the vessel to which the Dark Schneider is sealed. The great priest informs the king and the ministers that it is time to start preparing. He tells them that recently the increase in the number of demi-humans and monsters has been quite alarming. The great priest says it's due to the rising level of pulse waves from the darkness that has made the Dark Rebel army appear. He tells them that due to this darkness there is also a black cloud settling over the lands, and that it's a sign of the resurrection of the demon god Anthrasax. Amidst their discussion a guard runs in to inform the king about the arrival of Kevajubu and his hydra. He also tells them about the havoc this hydra is causing around the city of Metalikana. The king hears this news and concludes that the Dark Schneider must be awakened immediately. The minister also agrees, they commend how strong his power is and then insist that he must be rewakened. Yoko rejects their request because the Dark Schneider appears to be very dangerous, but her father tries to convince her that he is the only hope they have for survival. After so much thought, Yoko finally agrees, then she kisses Lucian and awakens the Dark Schneider. Surprisingly, the Dark Schneider awakes and the king is surprised to see him. The minister rushes to him and tells him to use his magic to save the kingdom, 
but he refuses. Yoko gets scared after he turns them now. She knew he wasn't going to help them. The Dark Schneider tells everyone that the only thing he wants is to see the whole world bow to him. He also adds saying he wants the great priest's head on a platter. After hearing this, the ministers try to capture Dark Schneider, but they get defeated in just one strike. The Dark Schneider then faces the great priest and tells him that he was one of the priests that stopped him 15 years ago, when he was just about to take control of the world. He then tells the priest that he is here for payback. However, Kevajubu has started sensing the evil aura of Dark Schneider. The evil aura seems to be resisting Kevajubu's Hydra. Due to this, he decides to head over to the castle where the aura comes from. The Dark Schneider is still bent on attacking the Great Priest. As he is about to strike the Great Priest, Yoko stops him. The Dark Schneider gets angry saying he has paid his debt to her for realizing him. He tells her that the Great Priest is his mortal enemy and he has to kill him. Immediately, Dark Schneider launches his attack on the Great Priest. Luckily for the priest, he was able to cast an anti-magic shield around himself, rendering the attack useless. The Dark Schneider asks the priest to go fist to fist with him, since his magic attacks were useless. All of a sudden, Dark Schneider cut his wrists and blood was flowing out of his hand. He tells them that he knows of a golem hidden deep underground of the palace. He uses his blood to cast a spell and open a magical channel to the golem. He then commands the golem to rise and do his bidding. Surprisingly, the golem shows up from underneath the castle, and he tells it to destroy the great priest. Yoko tries to stop him, but her feet seem glued to the floor as she doesn't know what to say. Luckily for the priest, Kevajubu shows up and interrupts them. Dark Schneider gets angry because Kevajubu injures his face. The Dark Schneider then sends his golem to defeat the Hydra, while he faces Kevajubu. In the end, the Dark Schneider defeats Kevajubu with just a punch, then he kills him using the Venom spell. After defeating Kevajubu, Dark Schneider then faces the Great Priest. As the golem is about to crush the Great Priest to the ground, Yoko interrupts him. After interrupting Dark Dark Schneider, Yoko then begs him to stop the attack. She also hits him saying he isn't anything like her younger brother Lucian. Then out of anger she asks Dark Schneider to return her brother to her. Dark Schneider tells Yoko that he is the same as Lucian and that they were just different sides with the same soul. He says whatever happened to Lucian shall also happen to him and whoever Lucian dearly cares for, he shall also care for them too. Dark Schneider notices that Yoko doesn't seem convinced by what he has just said, so he kisses her and seals himself back. Surprisingly, the golem disappears and the Dark Schneider gets sealed. Then the younger Lucian appears. Yoko seems to be very happy to see her younger brother. Yoko hugs Lucian very tightly, and she is happy that he has returned to his normal self. Meanwhile, the king and his ministers observe the lifeless golem on the floor, as he realizes that the other identity of Lucian is truly Dark Schneider. However, Gara, a ninja master, happens to be a sorcerer shogun of Kal Su. Alongside his dark ninjas observes the city metal Akana from a cliff. He senses the aura of the Venom spell, meaning that the Dark Schneider has truly returned. He tells his dark ninjas about how he and the Dark Schneider conquered the world. Upon hearing this, one of the sorcerer Shogun asks why the Dark Schneider isn't on their side and why he seems to be defending the Metalikana city. Then the sorcerer Shogun informs them that their next mission is to find out why the Dark Schneider is defending the kingdom. Due to what Gara said, one of the Dark Ninja asks him what will happen if Dark Schneider picks a fight with them. He replies saying Dark Schneider would be the greatest enemy he has ever faced. But nonetheless, he tells his Dark Ninjas that if anyone stands in his way, he and his Dark Ninjas will finish them off. All of a sudden, guards from the Metalikana sees them then challenges who they were. But the Dark Ninjas disappear leaving Gara behind. In one slash Gara, the Ninja Master finishes the guards off. The Dark Clouds are still settling over the Kingdom of Metalikana, which makes the Ministers worried. The Great Priest explains to the Minister that years ago the God of Destruction Anthrasax was sealed away by four seals, and these four seals were guarded by the four royal kingdoms. However, one of the kingdoms has been defeated by Kal Su, that's the Kingdom of Judas. Therefore, one of the four seals has been broken, and the Demon King has been awakened from stasis. That's the reason why the Dark Clouds are looming over the kingdom. And since the first seal has been broken, the human race could face annihilation. Upon hearing this, one of the ministers laments that why would anyone want to reawaken the God of Destruction? He cries out that only Kalsu could do this, and as soon as Yoko hears the name Kalsu, she becomes curious. Yoko walks up to her father and asks him what kind of person Kalsu is. Her father then explains that Kalsu is an evil sorcerer and one of Dark Schneider's close friends. He continues to tell her that Kalsu was one of Dark Schneider's senior disciples, and he fought alongside the Dark Schneider 15 years ago. 
Kalsu is one of Dark Schneider's strongest allies. Some even say he is stronger than Dark Schneider. In the temple where the God of Destruction is being sealed, Kalsu goes to meet a certain man, Abigail. Arriving at the temple, he asks a guard for Abigail, and he tells him that Abigail instructed them that he wants to be alone. Not minding what the guard said, Kalsu opens the door to the dungeon temple by himself. On meeting Abigail, he asks him how the God of Destruction, Anthrasax, is doing. Abigail tells him to listen to how strong the heartbeat is. He tells him that Anthrasax is the most powerful among the demon gods of yore. Abigail informs Kalsu that the heartbeat is a sign that Anthrasax's return is approaching soon. He also commends him for destroying the Judas kingdom and breaking the first seal. Then Abigail and Kalsu plans to attack Metalikana since they are the one protecting the second seal. Abigail tells Kalsu that he can't wait to see Anthrasax's tremendous powers again. Meanwhile in the city Metalikana, the minister begs Yoko to unseal the dark Schneider again. But she refuses very firmly. The ministers continue to beg her saying that Lord Osborne and Kevajuba were just a warning ahead, that the Dark Army will still come. However, Yoko rejects their offer because of the big incident Dark Schneider caused the other time. She tells them angrily that they cannot continue to use her and Lucian has tools to save the kingdom. Later in the day, Yoko laments badly about how selfish the minister was and the fact that she had to kiss him all the time was embarrassing for her. All she was saying didn't mean anything to Lucian since he couldn't understand the situation. Suddenly, he jumps on Yoko asking her to play with him, but Yoko wasn't just feeling it because a lot is on her mind. And she tells Yoko to sit that she didn't want to play. Lucian then tells her that since she didn't want to play, he will just go and do the laundry. He leaves the room to do the laundry then all of a sudden. She hears some group of young boys bullying Lucian and calling him laundry boy. Yoko quickly runs to help Lucian. She then chases them away, warning them that she will deal with them when next they disturb Lucian. Later at night while Lucian sleeps, Yoko stares at him thinking what kind of identity would be better for Lucian. Either it's the Dark Schneider or the young Lucian. She then promises herself not to unseal the Dark Schneider again. Meanwhile, the Metalikana army gets prepared for the battle against the Dark Army as they equip themselves with different Amor and spears. Princess Sheila is lost in thought over the Dark Schneider, worried to have seen him naked twice. Amidst all the crises in the city, Princess Sheila is only worried that she might have affections for the Dark Schneider. That same night, some group of guards talk about the Dark Rebel army assembling at the border. It is then that these guards get attacked by the ninja. Ninja Master. Then the Ninja Master goes up to Yoko's room. She gets surprised seeing him and asks who he is. Dara then introduces himself as the Ninja Master, but before he could finish talking, he gets attacked by Yoko. Unfortunately, he overpowers her. He then asks her about Dark Schneider and that in whose body is his reincarnation sealed. Dara tells her that two of their sorcerer shoguns were killed by the Venom spell and that only one man is capable of using that spell. And that's Dark Schneider. He tells her that he is surprised as to why the Dark Schneider wants to defend Metalikana. Gara threatens to make Yoko pay. If she doesn't tell him where the reincarnation is, Gara tries to touch Yoko and that wakes Lucian up. But Yoko tells him to go back to bed. But Dark Schneider takes over the control of Lucian's body. Dark Schneider notices that Yoko is about to be molested. He tells him to stop and that if he tries it again, he will kill him. Meanwhile, Gara recognizes the voice that is Dark Schneider's voice, although Yoko is surprised to see that Dark Schneider is in control of Lucian's body. Dark Schneider then informs her that because she has broken the seal twice, the seal has gotten weak. He tells her that it won't be long before he takes control of his body. Gara is surprised to see that Dark Schneider has been sealed in the body of a baby. Suddenly, Gionoto the Great Priest breaks into Yoko's room. Then Gara takes Yoko and jumps through the window. He tells the Great Priest that if he wants to see his daughter again, he should bring him Dark Schneider. Yoko is still surprised by all that is happening. Gara then takes Yoko to his ninja fortress. Reports reach the king about the Yoko kidnap and what the kidnapper wants in return. The Great Priest informs the king that they wanted the Dark Schneider to get on their side, and luckily they've avoided the worst case scenario. The ministers suggest that they form a squad to go and search for Yoko, but the Great Priest doesn't take their advice. The Great Priest tells them that she was kidnapped by ninjas and that the only person that knows their base is Dark Schneider. Meanwhile, the only person who could break the seal on Dark Schneider is Yoko, but since she has been kidnapped, everyone gets worried. Luckily for them, Princess Sheila says she knows the spell and she's still a virgin maiden. Therefore, she's willing to kiss Lucian and unseal the Dark Schneider. 
that the king stops her, saying the kiss of a princess is a sign of marriage, and that he cannot allow the princess to kiss Lucian. Surprisingly, the great priest asks for the king to be taken to his chambers, so that the princess would be able to kiss Lucian and unseal the dark Schneider. The princess then recites the spell and kisses Lucian to unseal the dark Schneider. When he gets unsealed, he asks them why they would allow a woman he doesn't know to give him a kiss. Then the great priest tells him that one of his allies, Gara, has kidnapped Yoko. The dark Schneider tells him he is aware of what he did. The Great begs him to help him save his daughter, while the ministers tell him to help them stop the resurrection of the demon god. Unfortunately, Dark Schneider refuses to help them. He says he is happy that the boss of Yoko has been kidnapped. Princess Sheila tells him to help Yoko since he declared that he loved her, but he tells her that after he conquers the world, he can have any woman he wants to himself. Then says either it's Yoko or Sheila, it doesn't really matter to him. Princess Sheila says he is such an evil man. She then asks what will happen to Yoko. Dark Skinder tells her that he doesn't care about what happens to her, and that he likes himself just the way he is. Surprisingly, Princess Sheila slaps Dark Schneider over his statement. He gets angry and calls her a foolish little princess. Princess Sheila accompanies Dark Schneider with a few soldiers to look for Yoko. Meanwhile, Princess Sheila is worried if they were in the right place. He tells her that the Dark Ninja has moved from the Grave Valley in the past 15 years. Princess Sheila tries to command the soldiers to move, but Dark Schneider stops her saying they will go when asks them to move. Inside of Gara Fortress, Yoko is being held captive. He promises her that if she can tell him how to unseal the Dark Schneider, he would let her go. Yoko couldn't tell him because she finds it irritating. Gara seems suspicious that she's in love with him. But Yoko denies vehemently that she isn't in love with him. Gara smiles and says he would tell her about Dark Schneider's past with women. Outside the fortress, Dark Schneider tells the Metalikana soldiers that he is surprised as to why the ninjas have attacked them. He tells them that they might be in the wrong place. The commandant of the soldiers gets angry that he had led them to the wrong location, while Yoko's life is at stake. Princess Sheila tries to calm the soldiers down by telling them not to allow Dark Schneider to get to them. Unknowingly to them, they were being followed by the Dark Ninjas M, then all of a sudden they get attacked by the ninjas. Luckily for them, Dark Schneider defeats the ninjas. Meanwhile, one of the surviving ninjas asks how they know the secret passage to the fortress. Dark Schneider immediately shuts him up by crushing his head to the ground. The Dark Schneider tells the princess that she is slowing them down, therefore he asks her to get rid of her sword and her amour. Princess Sheila quickly complies and takes off the amour. The soldiers get embarrassed to see their princess being treated that way. Meanwhile in the fortress, Gara is about to tell Yoko about the women Dark Schneider has been with. He asks her to take a guess about the number of women Dark Schneider must have been with. Yoko takes a guess saying he has been with 10 women, but Gara laughs hard at her at her answer. He tells her that Dark Schneider has been alive for 300 centuries and he has been with more than 100 women in his lifetime. Gara tells Yoko that among the women Dark Schneider has been with, there's one who is still alive and very much young. He says she is one of the Dark Schneider's four disciples and she's a sorcerer shogun. Yoko then gets curious and asks Gara if he was in love with her. Gara tells her that he wasn't sure about it then. Amidst their conversation he calls Yoko Miss, but she gets angry telling him that her name is Yoko and not Miss. Then Gara pours slime inside the pit where she's been held captive. He tells her that the particular slime is one of his favorite because it rips off clothes. Outside the fortress the soldiers arrive at the main gate. Princess Sheila tells them not to go in through he main gate because the ninjas might be there. But Dark Schneider doesn't heed to her advice. Instead, he moves towards the gate and blows it up. Inside the fortress, the slime has already ripped off the clothes of Yoko and Gara is waiting patiently to see her nakedness. Suddenly, Gara receives a report of some intruders blowing up the main gate. The ninja tell Gara the intruders are soldiers with one wizard. And Dark Ninjas then prepare to go and fight this person. But Gara tells them to hold on and not act hastily. He says they should wait and see if this person can pass through the labyrinth of death. Gara has a feeling that the intruder might be Dark Schneider. However, outside the fortress, the soldiers blame Dark Schneider for acting reckless and blowing up the main entrance. Dark Schneider and the soldier go in, but they are surprised to see that everywhere is cleared. The commandant is also amazed as to why the ninjas haven't deployed more of their forces to where they are. Then all of a sudden a minotaur appears and attacks them. Dark Schneider asks everyone to run towards the ladder. Then the minotaur breaks down a big wall. Meanwhile, Dark Schneider tries to save the princess from the falling wall. Therefore, he carries her, but she slaps him for touching her. The princess thinks Dark Schneider is trying to take advantage of her. When they get to the ladder, the soldier tries to climb, but Dark Schneider stops them, saying that as a knight, their first priority should be saving the princess. Due to that, he asks them to wait behind and defend Princess Sheila while he climbs the ladder with the 
the princess. He asks the princess to climb while he comes behind her. He tells her he will be watching. But the princess perceives it has something else and slaps him again thinking he meant he will be watching her underneath. Out of anger, he carries her on his shoulders, saying that he is in a hurry. On the other hand, Yoko is already feeling tired from the slime attacks, while Gar whispers to himself that Dark Schneider had better be fast to save Yoko from dying. As soon as they get to the top of the ladder, a big-eyed monster suddenly shows up and attacks Dark Schneider and the princess, but luckily for him, he is able to block the attack of this monster. Dark Schneider recognizes the monster as Suzuki Dojimin. He says that the passage between the two dimensions must have opened up when Anthrasax was activated, and because of that it has caused the monster to materialize on Earth. Gara unlocks the chains attached to Yoko's hands. He says he wants her to watch his fight with Dark Schneider and it will be impossible for her to watch it if she's in the pit. Gara says that Dark Schneider might want to conquer the world but that doesn't mean Dark Schneider will want him to join him. He says that for them to be able to work together, he must find out who is the strongest. Meanwhile, Dark Schneider is having a hard time breaking through the defense of the eyeball monster. He casts his fire bullet spells but he is still unable to defeat it, and suddenly the monster attacks the princess. Luckily for her, Dark Schneider uses his body as a shield to protect the princess. Fortunately for him, the princess picks up a spear and attacks the monster. This attack weakens the defense spell of the monster. Dark Schneider sees it has an opportunity to attack the monster. He finally defeats the monster and heals up his broken arm. Princess Sheila discovers that Dark Schneider is very worried about Yoko. Dark Schneider suddenly carries Princess Sheila on his shoulders again. He says if she continues getting into his head, she's going to suffer the consequences. After carrying her, he rubs her labs and bite. However, the soldiers are still trying to fight off the Minotaur. Dark Schneider and Princess Sheila are still looking for Yoko inside the fortress. Then Princess Sheila begins to lament that after all what Dark Schneider has done to her, she isn't pure for marriage anymore. But she says has to go through all this to save Yoko, because she deserves a due to the fact that she has saved their kingdom many times as well. Dark Schneider finally drops her off his shoulder, and Princess Sheila notices how tired he looks. Dark Schneider tells her that he seems that way because of the amount of magic he has used that day. He brags saying no one could use that amount of magic in a day. He then tells her that he would be saving the remaining magic that will be used to rescue Yoko. He then tells her that she will have to protect herself henceforth. On their way, Princess Sheila sees a sword. She picks the sword so that she will use it to protect herself, but it turns out the sword is a chanted sword. Princess Sheila loses control of the sword and she mistakenly cuts Dark Schneider with the sword. The sword happens to be laid with poison. Dark Schneider then collapses from the poison. Meanwhile, Princess Sheila gets scared because she didn't know what to do. Dark Schneider then asks her to suck the poison out of his body before it intoxicates him. Inside the fortress, Yoko asks Gara why the rebel army wants to resurrect the demon god Anthrasax. He replies saying they want to resurrect him so that he can destroy the present world and they will rebuild a new world where they will rule. She asks him that if Anthrasax destroys the world then what would they rule over? Gara tells her that they will defeat the demon god before he destroys the world. Meanwhile, while Princess Sheila is trying to suck out the poison from Dark Schneider's body, the demon god and the sword awakens and tries to attack Princess Sheila and Dark Schneider. The demon god and the sword casts a spell to burn Princess Sheila and Dark Schneider to ashes. Dark Schneider blocks the spell but his visions are blurry due to the poison. Kara tells Yoko that there are four different types of magic clerics and wizards use. He tells Yoko that Dark Schneider uses the spirit magic and the dark magic. He tells her that Dark Schneider's speciality is the lighting magic and it comes from the wind elemental plane. Gara tells her that the demon god is a god of the wind elemental, meaning it will be very difficult for him to defeat the demon god. Dark Schneider creates a defensive circle around himself and Princess Sheila to protect themselves from the fire. The demon god continues to increase the fire intensity, and the defensive barrier could barely last again. It is then that Princess Sheila asks Dark Schneider if he knows any cooling spell, but he replies saying he hates any cooling element. The demon god tells him that he would use his magic element against him and that's fire. Then the god increases the fire intensity to 20,000 degrees. This makes the barrier small for both of them. Dark Schneider then goes out of the barrier to face the demon god. Dark Schneider also uses his fire element on the demon god and this causes an explosion on the fortress wall. Meanwhile, the surviving soldier finds this wall and tries to go in but finds a river of magma flowing out of the broken wall. Dark Schneider then casts a spell of an extra hot fire flame on the demon god. Surprisingly, he defeats the demon god of fire himself. After defeating him, the demon god still seems to be alive. Then he comes and crushes his head to the floor. All of a sudden, the demon god disappears back into his sword. Dark Schneider picks the sword and the dark ninjas are surprised to see that he could defeat the demon god. 
Dark Snader then calls out Gara to bring Yoko. He uses the sword with him to break down the wall dividing him and Gara. Gara commends his effort in defeating the Labyrinth of Death. He then tells him that they need to find out who the strongest is between the both of them. Meanwhile, Dark Snader gets angry because Gara stripped Yoko off her dress. Then they begin to fight. Gara attacks Dark Schneider with the first strike, because he knows how weak he is. However, Dark Schneider is able to survive this attack. Then the fight gets more intense. Dark Schneider tries to cast the Venom spell, but Gara cuts off one of the arms of Dark Schneider. That still did not stop Dark Schneider from activating the spell he uses the spell on Gara, and he also loses one of his arms. Then they vow to kill each other, and Princess Sheila gets scared because she knows that Dark Schneider does not have many spells left. However, Gara tries to make Dark Schneider angry by telling false stories about him and Yoko. He tells Dark Schneider how he pours slime on her to melt her cloth. He says he licked her all over after ripping her clothes off. Hearing all this makes Dark Schneider very angry. He tells him that he laid with her and her body was very soft. Meanwhile, Yoko screams saying that all that Gara says is a lie. Dark Schneider gets very angry and casts a spell on Gara. Gara also casts a spell back on Dark Schneider, but Dark Schneider uses another spell to fuse his first spell with Gara's spell. Due to that, he causes an earthquake which buries the fortress alongside with the Dark Ninjas and Gara. However, Dark Schneider casts a defensive spell around the princess and Yoko, so the defensive spell protects them from the earthquake. After the fortress had collapsed, Dark Schneider goes to check if Gara is still alive. Surprisingly, Gara is alive. Gara asks Dark Schneider how he could still have the power to defeat him even though he was weak. Then Dark Schneider replies saying it was because Gara made him mad enough. That's why he could have that power. Gara is surprised to see Dark Schneider's arm popping out of his shoulders. Then suddenly he remembers Lars, his pet. Gara gets very furious and begins to look for him, but luckily he was in the defensive barrier Dark Schneider created. Then Gara realizes that Dark Schneider has changed in the past 15 years for him to have speared Lars. Meanwhile, the princess also wonders what kind of man he is for him to have spared the life of his enemy loved ones. Yoko thanks him for saving her and Dark Schneider replies saying even though she isn't a virgin any longer he still loves her. Upon hearing this, Yoko hits Dark Schneider and calls him a pervert. Gara informs them that their kingdom is currently under attack by the Dark Army, and Yoko then seeks Dark Schneider assistance. But he turns her down saying he doesn't care. All of a sudden the dragon called Lars speaks to Dark Schneider telling him that he hasn't changed at all and hopes he hasn't forgotten him. Kasu looks through a portal and sees that Metalikana will soon fall, and soon the second seal will be broken. All of a sudden he receives a report that the ninja fortress in the Grave Valley has fallen. He is also informed that Gara has defected from the four divine kings. Kalsu couldn't believe that Gara could betray them. He suspects that Dark Schneider must have deceived him into joining them. Kalsu then sends a message to one of the four divine kings. Arsha's knee he says she is also a ninja master and all her allies tremble at her feet. He asks her to kill Dark Schneider by all means and stop him from growing stronger. Meanwhile at the city Metalikana, the army seems to be holding off the Dark Army well. One of the ministers suggests that they hold a peace negotiation with the Dark Army, but the Great Priest sees it as a foolish idea. Arshizni receives a letter from the King of Metalikana. He seeks to have a peace negotiation with them. But Arshizni asks them to kill the messenger and send his body back. She says she will not surrender to any kingdom. Arshizni tells him that it's either the people of Metalikana win or they will kill them all. She says those are the rules of war. Immediately a message from Kalsu arrives. She has been ordered to kill Dark Schneider. Upon hearing this, the the army is surprised to know that Dark Schneider is alive. She asks about Gara, the one who was ordered to look into Dark Schneider. Then she receives news that he had defected from the four divine kings. Arsha's knee is in her tent and she is so pissed that Gara defected with his army. She is also a bit sad about having to kill Dark Schneider. She tries to rest and suddenly she finds herself in another dimension. Dark Schneider is the one using an illusion spell on her. However, she is surprised to be where she met Dark Schneider for the first time. He tells her that she hasn't changed at all due to the elven blood that she has. He says he remembers years ago when he rescued her from the tribe war. Arsha's knee then asks him if he really wants to talk about old times. Meanwhile, Dark Schneider gets curious to see how much she has grown. He then unzips her dress and dips his hand into her clothes. He tries to use her feelings to manipulate her. But Arshas finds out and kicks his face calling him a pervert. She tells him that they were always together but he disappointed her when he built his harem and kept it a secret from her. She tells him that a command has been issued to kill him and she promises to make sure that he never comes back again. Arshas knee breaks through the illusion spell and immediately she asks for Shaanari. She tells her that she can't leave her post. She must help her kill Dark Schneider. 
Arce orders Sean Ari to use her powers to kill Dark Schneider at all cost. Lars asks Dark Schneider about how it went with trying to convince Arsha's knee. He tells him that he is very sure it didn't work out. Lars continues to talk and he tells Dark Schneider about how crazy Arsha's was about him 15 years ago. He tells Dark Schneider that a dark elf and an evil wizard will be a funny combination, but this one didn't sit well with Dark Schneider. Out of anger, he kicks Lars to a tree and asks him why he followed him. Then Lars tells him that he followed him because he sneaked away from the princess, and so that he can keep his eyes on him. Dark Schneider then warns him that he hasn't killed him because he is a small and pathetic animal, and that if he had appeared in his original form, he would have sliced him into two. All of a sudden, a girl runs out of the woods calling for help. She seems to be chased by what looks like a spider. Dark Schneider tries to help her, but Lars tells him that something seems suspicious because it's fishy to find a spider in the mountain. Dark Schneider ignores Lars and tells him not to ruin things for him. Then he casts his spells, making the spider explode. After the explosion, he sees a talisman magic. Lars then informs him that the sorcerer who used the talisman to summon the spider must be close by. But Dark Schneider begins to wonder that who else beside him could use that spell. The girl Dark Schneider save thanks him for saving her. She then tells him that she would like to return the favor. She asks him to rest in her house since he has been traveling for a while. On getting to the house, she tells them that because the house is in the middle of the mountain, they barely have much. Therefore, she asks them to manage the tea she prepares. Meanwhile, Lars tells Dark Schneider that he knows what kind of man he is and that he is sure dirty thoughts were already running through his mind. Later at night, they are served food at a large quantity. Then the young girl asks him about what brings him to the mountain. She asks him if it's the Metalicana War that brought him to the mountain, but he denies saying one of his family member had caused a problem and he is there to clean up after her. Later at night in his room, Lars tells Dark Schneider that he is suspicious about the family because that region is under Arce Nee's control and he is surprised as to why they haven't run away. Then the young lady appears and tells Dark Schneider that in her family traditions, they give out their virginity to whoever saves them. Dark Schneider accepts her offer and lays her down to sleep with her. Meanwhile, Lars tries to inform him that it's a trap, but he shuts him up. He starts to pick her ear and things begin to get intense. Then all of a sudden, the young girl puts a talisman on Dark Schneider's back. This talisman brings out a huge spider and the spider wraps around Dark Schneider's back. She tells him that the spider neutralizes magic and it never lets go of its prey. She tells him that she's one of the most powerful sorcerers in the world. She happens to be one of the three sorcerer generals, Sean Ari. Dark Schneider tells her that he knows she isn't powerful enough to activate the ancient magic. He then asks who helps her. She replies saying it's Arsha's knee one of the four divine kings. However, Dark Schneider is surprised to hear that Arsha's is that strong to use the ancient magic. Sean Ari rejoices that she has defeated the invincible Dark Schneider. Suddenly, Dark Schneider appears behind her on the bed. He has been using an illusion spell on her all this while. Immediately, she tries to put another talisman on him, but he can stop her. She then asks him when he started the illusion. He tells her that it was before she stalked the talisman on him. Dark Schneider tells her that he didn't kill her all this while because he was curious about what a virgin like her could do. He then tells her that she's beautiful. Sean Ari gets carried away and she falls in love with Dark Schneider. He sleeps with her through the night, and Sean Ari cannot complete her mission. In the morning as he is about to leave, Sean Ari stops Dark Schneider. She tells him that another Asse who is stronger than she is, is waiting ahead the road. She begs him not to leave because she doesn't want him to die, but Dark Schneider turns a deaf ear to her and leaves. As he is about to leave, she hits him and tells him that he is the first man she will ever love, and she wants to see him again. Dark Schneider promises to come back for her when the mark of the armor on her body disappears. After he leaves, Sean Ari cries and says she wishes Dark Schneider was her master. On their way, Lars asks Dark Schneider if he really laid with Sean Ari. Instead of answering him, he kicks him into the air. Then he flashes back to what happened last night. He just bit her ear and he didn't do anything with her. Meanwhile, news reached Arsha's knee that Sean Ari couldn't kill Dark Schneider and she had escaped. Arsha's then realized that Dark Schneider had seduced her too. Out of frustration, she breaks the table and says Dark Schneider is a curse to women. Dark Schneider comes across a sorcerer. He leads an army of demi-humans. They all attack Dark Schneider, but he defeats them using his fire element to fight against them. The young boy now faces Dark Schneider head on. Dark Schneider tells him that he must have courage to have attacked the most wizard in the world. The young boy tells him that he is a warrior and he has no fear, and that victory is meaningless unless it's one fair and square. Dark Schneider is pissed at how cool the young boy acts. He tells him that being cool is for only men like him. Dark Schneider then asks him if he was the one who turned the humans to stone. He says he would know after the fight. 
The young boy attacks Dark Schneider and shatters him into pieces, but unfortunately for the young boy it is an illusion and not really Dark Schneider. Dark Schneider then appears behind him and quickly Lars warns him about the kind of swordsmanship style he is using. Lars tells him that he is using the Harakin style and that's a combination of workmanship and ninjutsu. The young boy tells Dark Schneider that he wants to ask the gun a question, but Dark Schneider tells him that he isn't in the mood to answer any questions. All of a sudden Dark Schneider uses a fire spell on him, but the young boy disappears and he survives the attack. The young boy asks him what he did to Sean Ari and why she disappeared. Dark Schneider tells him that she is probably tired of fighting the war, but the young boy cuts him off saying that they share a strong bond and she couldn't have disappeared over such trivial issues. Dark Schneider is surprised that she disappeared, and he then asks if she has fallen in love with him that much. Out of anger, the young boy asks what he has done to her. Dark Schneider tells him that she tasted so good as a virgin. The young boy tries to attack him then he shields himself with the effort sword he obtained from defeating the demon god of fire. Dark Schneider then strikes him with the sword of fire. The attack shatters his armor Dark Schneider realizes that she is a woman tells him that even though she's a woman her mission hasn't changed. She vows to destroy Dark Schneider. She uses the power Empress Ni gave her for pledging her loyalty to her to attack Dark Schneider. She tells him that the spell is what turned those humans to stone. Dark Schneider tries to sway her with words. He tells her that because she said she has never met a man who could beat her in battle she isn't a woman but a warrior. He tells her that those words show how hung up she is about being a woman. Meanwhile, she tells Dark Schneider that the more he talks, the faster the faster the spell works. He tells her that there is a spell that will turn him back to a human, but she giggles that the spell she used isn't just any incantation. She tells him that it's a spell derived from the ancient war gods. Upon hearing this Dark Schneider gets scared because the spell seems to be a high ancient magic. Lars then advises him to just find out which god is the source of the spell. But Dark Schneider couldn't come up with any god's name due to the fact that he isn't in contact with any one of them. Then the young girl gets angry and says she wanted to leave him to get petrified, but because of what he did to Sean Ari she vows to kill him on the spot. As she is about to kill Dark Schneider, Season Ari appears and saves him with her spider talisman. The young lady then asks why Sean Ari betrayed Empress Ni. Sean Ari tells her that Dark Schneider is a man with great abilities, and she tells her that Dark Schneider is stronger than any of the leaders they have ever known. The young lady doesn't seem ready to listen to Sean Ari as she tells her that she's been used by Dark Schneider. Sean Ari sees that she can't convince Kai, then she attacks her with her talisman, but Kai defeats the spiders in just one strike. Then she gets angry and says she's going to kill both of them together. Meanwhile, as she's about to cast her spell, she mentions the name of her god. Dark Schneider then smiles and makes a joke of Kai because unknowingly she has mentioned the name of the god who is the source of the spell. Dark Schneider breaks free from her spell and tells her that he is the most unique wizard in the universe. Kai gets angry and tries to attack Dark Schneider with the spell again, but this time he deactivates the spell saying her god Ing Y is just a subordinate to his god. So his god H has the power to deactivate any of her spells. He then attacks Kai with a spell in the form of an arrow. As he is about to finish her off, Sean Ari begs Dark Schneider not to kill her. Kai then takes advantage of what is happening and summons a Cicatrice. Dark Schneider then realizes that the Cicatrice is the source of all her petrification spells. She commands the Cicatrice through a crystal that amplifies her thoughts and transmits them to the Cicatrice. She then begins to attack them with this monster. The Cicatrice is a gas-emitting monster. The monster emits a gas that can turn them into stone. Dark Schneider tries to protect Sean Ari from the monster and D then gets his hands petrified. Fortunately for them, the wind changed its direction and the gas blew towards Kai's direction. This made Kai lose focus and she lost her crystal. The Kikatris loses control and attacks Kai. Meanwhile, Dark Schneider helps her and kills the monster. Kai asks Dark Schneider to kill her and that if he doesn't kill her, he will regret it. She promises that after she heals, she will come after him again. Kai collapses and Dark Schneider catches her. He tells her that she can come and kill him anytime, but first, she needs to fix herself up. Dark Schneider sucks tea, he poisons Kia's thighs, and this makes Sean Ari very jealous. Kai warns Dark Schneider about the third sorcerer general. She tells him that he is much stronger than she and Sean Ari. She tells him the third sorcerer general used his magic to make his body immortal, and that he gets stronger and stronger every day. Dark Schneider then asks Kai if she's worried about him, but she replies by telling him that his thoughts are absurd. He prepares to leave and bids them farewell. He tells them to be good ladies or else he'll come back. 
At that moment, Kai realizes what Sean Ari meant earlier. Kai apologizes to Sean Ari for not understanding her earlier. However, Lucian takes control of Dark Schneider's body while he is on the journey with Lars. Dark Schneider complains that due to the use of excessive magic in the Ninja Fortress, his powers get weak and Lucidin is about to take over. Unfortunately for Lars, Lucian takes over the body while on their journey. In the Kingdom Meta Lacana, the Kingdom Army cannot hold back the Dark Army any longer and the castle seems at stake. Then surprisingly Gara shows up with his 2,000 army of ninjas, and they've come to rescue Metalikana. Meanwhile, Yoko embarks on a journey to find Dark Schneider and Lucian. Lucian and Lars go around in the bush looking for Yoko. All of a sudden Lucian sees a bathing woman and it appears to be Yoko. Yoko is very happy to see Lucian. She quickly runs to hug him. She tells him that she's really happy to see him. Yoko tells him how he disappeared all of a sudden on their way back from the ninja fortress. She tells how worried she was when she realized she couldn't find him. Suddenly the knights accompanying Miss Yoko rushes in because they heard her noise, but she kicks them back because she is undressed. Later that night they rest in a cave and tell the knight about how they scared her earlier. Then they explain saying they thought that she was in trouble. They promise her not to surprise her like that again. Meanwhile Yoko realizes that Lucian also saw her nakedness earlier but she overlooks since he is just a young boy. The soldiers get curious and ask Miss Yoko if Lucian is the body where Dark Schneider is sealed. They also ask about the little dragon Lars. Yoko tells them that Lars is from the ninja's fortress. The knights tell him that all of this could be a trap. But Yoko stops them saying Gar isn't a bad guy. The knights begin to wonder why the little dragon shares name with Princess Sheila's older brother. One of the knights explains that 15 years ago Prince Lars Ui used a forbidden spell so that he could defeat Dark Schneider. The spell transformed him into the dragon knight, and he fought alongside the four heroes to save the four kingdoms. The knight tells them that they say Dark Schneider and Prince Lars killed themselves at that time, but no one could confirm it. Then another knight suggests that maybe the little dragon is the reincarnation of Prince Lars. They laugh it off because it sounded hilarious. Count Diamon, the third sorcerer general, asks a man named Giotto to produce a selection of girls from the village for him. All the girls happen to be virgins. Meanwhile Giotto brings the girl to prove his loyalty to Diamon and how worthy he can be to him. Then Diamond tells Giotto that he won't lose easily to Dark Schneider because he is an immortal, and that he has acquired eternal life to outlive everyone on the planet. He tells Giotto that even his power rivals that of Empress Ni. He says he needs to drink the blood of the virgins in order to make his power grow stronger. Suddenly, Diamond realizes that one of the virgin maiden Giotto brings isn't a virgin. He tells him that he will have to punish him for his transgressions. Giotto tries to beg him saying he would get him another virgin. All of a sudden, Diamond bites his neck and sucks his blood. Diamond gets worried about how the others he sent to get virgin maidens are doing with their hunt. However, a werewolf attacks young girls in the forest, and Yoko senses its evil aura and alerts the knights. Immediately, they rush out of their tent to face the werewolf, but the werewolf defeats the knight. Meanwhile, it has smelled Yoko to know that she's a virgin. The werewolf then promises to capture her for Lord Diamond. Then angrily, Dark Schneider takes over of Lucian's and warns the werewolf not to lay his hands on Yoko. Dark Schneider calls the werewolf a beast and promises to turn him into minced meat. The werewolf then gets angry and starts to punch the young Lucian. Suddenly the young Lucian stabs the werewolf's stomach and drags his body all over the floor. He beats him for looking down on him. Lars then gets confused seeing that the kid is really Dark Schneider on the inside. Saima's Yoko is surprised to see the amount of power Dark Schneider uses through the young Lucian. After beating the werewolf, Dark Schneider then begins to cast the Venom spell. It is then that the werewolf realizes that the young kid is Dark Schneider. Dark Schneider casts the spell through Lucian and defeats the werewolf. However, the werewolf managed to live. Dark Schneider plans to finish him off. Then the werewolf calls on Count Dai Emin to save. Then Dark Schneider realizes that he is sent by Count. Dark Schneider decides that he has werewolves working for him to find virgins from the local villages, meaning he is a vampire and a very strong one at that. Dark Schneider then wonders why Count Diamond works under Arsha's knee. He takes a wild guess and says that it's because he wants to overthrow Arsha's and call Sue. He asks the werewolf whether it's true or not. Dark Schneider promises to kill the werewolf if he doesn't tell him the truth. Then the werewolf confesses and tells him the truth, and he begs him to let him go but Dark Schneider crushes his skull immediately. Yoko then scolds Lucian about how cruel he is and she asks him why he suddenly disappeared on their way back from the ninja fortress. Meanwhile, he turns a deaf ear to her questions. She asks him about Arshas and Kalsu but he refuses to tell her. Unknowingly to them, Dai Ammon is watching them from the mountaintop. Dai Ammon realizes that Dark Schneider has been sealed in young boy's body and can't come out until conditions are met. Count Diamond then tells his army about Dark Schneider and how he conquered the world 15 years ago. 
he tells them that Dark Schneider is a very strong wizard with the physique of a warrior, and that he has been reincarnated many times. But this time Diamond sees himself being lucky because Dark Schneider is trapped in the body of a young boy. Then he jumps off the cliff with his army to meet Dark Schneider. Diamond introduces himself as one of the three generally Diamond. He continues to tell them that people tremble at his name. Diamond then decides that Dark Schneider can only exist when Lucian is in a deep slumber. He then orders his army to capture Dark Schneider and every one of them. In Diamond's fortress, he cages Dark Schneider and ties Yoko down. Diamond is so happy to have captured Dark Schneider easily and also to have acquired three beautiful virgins. The three beautiful virgins happen to be Yoko, Kai Harn, and Shaanari. He tells Shaanari and Kai Harn that he will execute them and take responsibility for it. And suddenly Kai Harn breaks free from her shackles just like Shaanari. Kai tells Diamond that they only pretended to get caught so that he can take them to him. Hearing this Diamond gets very angry and sucks Jado's blood. Then Yoko realizes that Diamond is really a vampire. Then Diamond tells them that he wants suck their blood, and that if he does he would be stronger than Arsha's knee and Lord Kalsu. Sean Ari attacks Diamond with her talisman and immediately Kai also strikes Diamond, but surprisingly to them his wounds heal immediately after the attack. Then Kai brings out a cross and garlic, due to the fact that those are vampire's weaknesses. However, Diamond grabs Kai's hands and sucks her blood. Diamond tells them that he would suck their blood and get strong to defeat Lord Kalsu and Empress Ni. Sean Ari tries to save Kai but Diamond stops her with his kick. Sean Ari then tells Diamond that Dark Schneider would save his friends since Empress Ni and Lord Kalsu were once Dark Schneider's friends. However, Yoko wishes that she could reach Dark Schneider and unseal him, but because of where he is kept and how tied her hands are, she cannot reach him. Then Lars realizes all that is going on. He figures out that Dark Schneider is sealed inside the body of Lucian, and that Lucian and Dark Schneider have different identities with a single body and soul. Diamond tells Kai to look at Dark Schneider and that he is a boy, therefore defeating him is a piece of cake for him. He says after he defeats him he would be unstoppable, and he would suck Kal Su in Ni's blood, then kick Kai away from his front. Seeing this, Dark Schneider gets angry and tries to break free from Lucian's body. Meanwhile, Gar and his dark ninjas defend Metalikana. They fight off demi-humans from penetrating the city. Gara gets worried about Dark Schneider and why he hasn't returned to protect Metalikana yet. Then in Diamond's fortress, Dark Schneider and Lucian fight for who will take over the body. However, Dark Schneider needs to take over the body so that he can save his friends from Diamond. Meanwhile, Lars and Yoko find it surprising that Lucian and Dark Schneider could exist at the same time. Diamond sees that Dark Schneider is finding it hard to come out of the young boy's body. He ignores him and goes after Sean Ari. Meanwhile, Sean Ari tries to run away from Diamond. Yoko kicks Diamond in the face to protect Sean from Diamond. The Diamond gets very angry because Yoko kicked his face. He angrily kicks Yoko toward the walk and she passes out. Upon seeing this, Dark Schneider gets very angry and surprisingly he breaks the seal. Everyone is amazed to see that Dark Schneider can break free from the cage. Lars is really happy to see Dark Schneider and he calls him the infinite god of death and destruction. Dark Schneider asks Diamond how dare he kick Yoko the woman he adores. He tells Diamond that someday Yoko will bear his children then Dark Schneider attacks Diamond with an advanced version of the Balvat spell. Dark Schneider is surprised because the lighting spell and the cooling spells are what kill vampires, but this doesn't work on Diamond at all. Diamond walks up to Dark Schneider and tells him that he doesn't like his attitude and that an attitude like that is meant for divine beings like him. He tells Dark Schneider that he will teach him the meaning of fear. Meanwhile, Dark Schneider asks Diamond to give up now that he doesn't have a chance. Then suddenly Diamond uses his special power to attack Dark Schneider. This attack decapitates Dark Schneider. Yoko screams out of fear that he might have died, while the others also get scared. Diamond's army praises him and says there is no one better than the almighty Count Diamond. He then sends his army to capture the girls so that he can suck their blood. Sean Ari stops them using her talisman. The army gets burned with fire and they run back to their master. Diamond asks Sean Ari to give up because she has no hope of survival again since he has already decapitated Dark Schneider. Diamond laughs so hard in victory for defeating Dark Schneider. Suddenly Dark Schneider appears behind him. Diamond screams out of fear and realizes that he has just decapitated Jado and not Dark Schneider. He gets angry and starts to do a rotation assassination. Unknowingly to Diamond, he is destroying his castle then Dark Schneider catches one of his magic and magnifies it with another spell. Then he uses it to attack a wall beside Diamond. This makes the wall collapse and exposes Diamond to daylight. 
All of a sudden, Diamond falls to his knees and turns to San. Then Dark Schneider tells him that someone like him could never scare him. Then Diamond resurrects as a bat because vampire bodies are immortal. Dark Schneider catches Diamond and tears part of his wings. He then lays a curse on him. He confines him with a curse that will make him forever loyal to Dark Schneider. Dark Schneider tells him that any day he disobeys him, the worm in his body will bite him and turn him into a toad. Then Diamond's army runs away, and Sean Ari cries to Dark Schneider for help. She asks him to save Kai before she turns into a vampire. Dark Schneider then tells Sean Ari to take Kai to the temple the next day so that she will be treated there. He rushes to check on Yoko if she is fine. He sees that she is alright then he begins to lick her cheeks. This gets Sean Ari angry and she asks him who Yoko is too. He replies by saying Yoko is the mother of his unborn children. Yoko slaps him saying they were just friends. Dark Schneider ends up breaking Sean Ari's heart. Dara continues to protect Metalikana City from the Dark Rebel Army. Meanwhile, Kalsu watches him from a portal and he is very sad that he changed sides. Kalsu asks Empress Ni about the Dark Schneider and she tells him that her three sorcerer generals have all fallen to Dark Schneider. Meanwhile, Abigail is worried that Empress Ni might betray them too, and he tells her to ascertain her loyalty by undergoing the accused spell. Abigail puts the loyalty spell on Empress Ni and tells her the consequences of breaking their pact. Empress Ni tells him that she would have happily killed Dark Schneider with or without the spell. She then excuses herself saying she has a don't to complete. Kalsu asks Abigail if he isn't doing too much. Abigail replies by saying he did that because Arsha's knee is the closest among them to Dark Schneider. He tells him that she spent a hundred years with Dark Schneider and that the love she would have for Dark Schneider would be that of a father and daughter. And that is why he used that spell on her. Abigail then asks Kalas about what he thinks regarding Dark Schneider's activities recently. And then Kalsu tells Abigail about how much Dark Schneider has changed. He tells Abigail that the Dark Schneider he knows wouldn't have speared any of his enemies if it was 15 years ago. But now he is surprised to see that he didn't kill Gar or the three sorcerer generals. He gets them to join his side. Abigail agrees and says that he has become a completely different person over the last 15 years. Kalsu begins to think about why Dark Schneider changed so much in the last 15 years. Meanwhile, Abigail tells Kalas that there's something they must consider. And that's the fact that Dark Schneider is against them from achieving their goals of building a new world. Therefore, he says that they must hurry and kill him. Abigail shows calls to the demon god and tells him that the demon god will bring about the perfect world. In the world, there will be no war and they all will be ruled by only magic. He tells Kalsu that the first stage of the reawakening has started and that together they must free the demon god. Then they plan to reinforce the main army, and while Ni distracts Dark Schneider, they will take the seal from the other royal families. Meanwhile, Abigail says that it doesn't matter who wins between Dark Schneider and Arsha's Ni. He also explains to Kalsu that there are rules to breaking the accused spell. He says that she must first acquire the heart of her target to be able to break the spell. Abigail explains that even if Dark Schneider tries to save Ni, he will have to give up his life to save her. And if the two of them face each other heads, one of them could vanish from the world because they use the same kind of magic. Kalsu thinks that Empress Ni has made a losing bet with Abigail. Yoko is about to return to the city of Metalikana. Dark Schneider bids Sean Ari farewell, and he tells her that he will meet her at the Temple of Kant. Yoko wishes Kai a quick recovery and bids Sean Ari farewell. Meanwhile, Sean Ari tells Dark Schneider to be careful of Empress Ni. She tells him that among the four divine kings, Empress Ni is the strongest. While she leaves whispers in her heart and hopes that Dark Schneider doesn't forget her, Yoko then advises Dark Schneider to never be unfaithful to women, and then they head home to the city of Metalikana. Meanwhile, in the battles against the Dark Army, Gara continues to protect the city and then all of a sudden he gets struck by lightning. It appears to be Empress Ni. She asks Gara why he betrayed the four divine kings, and he tells her that he joined forces with Dark Schneider because he was more fun. Hearing this makes Empress Ni more furious, then she strikes Gara with a lighting sword, but he defends himself with a Murasama blade. Gara attacks Empress Ni with knives and tries to distract her with his boomerang. Meanwhile, the birds in the air distract her and Gara immediately takes the opportunity of it and slices her into two. However, it's just an illusion Gara sliced. Then she shows up behind Gara and cuts his arm away from his body. She also collapses the bridge and buries him within the bridge. Meanwhile, Gara also uses a counterattack and multiplies himself into different parts. Seeing this, Empress Ni gets very shocked at the kind of technique he used. 
He used the ninja splitting techniques, and Yoko faced each other again. However, this time around he fought her with several copies. They start fighting and Gara uses his best technique on Empress Ni, but she finds real Gara among the seven copies. Luckily for her, she's able to block his attack, but she loses her sword and loses the battle. Gara spears her because she's so dear to Dark Schneider. Everyone rejoices because Gara has just defeated Empress Ni and known that to them her sword was never broken, and that it is lighting that forms Empress Ni's sword. She attacks him with fire bullets and then strikes him with her sword, causing Gara to bleed. As she is about to finish him off, Dark Schneider appears and blows up the bridge. He did that to save Gara. Empress Ni is about to kill Gara and then suddenly someone attacks the bridge, trying to distract her. This person appears to Dark Schneider. The minister gets very scared because Dark Schneider has destroyed the bridge. However, the great priest isn't worried about the bridge. He is worried that Dark Schneider still amasses such an amount of power. Empress Ni sees Dark Schneider with Yoko and gets very angry. She says he is always tormenting and hurting her. She flashes back to when they were still lovers, and she had to wait for him all the time while he was around with women. She then promises to kill him so that he will stop tormenting her. Suddenly, Dark Schneider appears behind Arsha's knee and wraps his hands around her waist. He advises her not to think of killing him, he says it is bad manners. Meanwhile, she vows to kill him and that he will never come back to life again. Dark Schneider then dips his hands inside Empress Ni clothes, then he tells her never to talk back at him again. He continues to touch her, and suddenly he bites her ears and she collapses to the ground. She then asks him if he did the same to Sean, Ari, and Kai too, but he tells her not to be foolish and that she is the one he has loved for a hundred years. Empress Ni's heart becomes softened over the words he Dark Schneider has said to her. Then all of a sudden her nails turn purple and she remembers what Abigail said to her. She remembers that the moment her nails then crimson red, she will be ripped to pieces and she will then turn into a lowly and helpless toad for eternity. Empress Ni suddenly gets hold of herself, then she runs away from Dark Schneider and promises him to be back when she builds her army. The minister rejoices to see that the enemy begins to retreat. Empress Ni gets very sad that she couldn't kill Dark Schneider. She remembers that they grew up together and lived together for a hundred years. She says there isn't a single inch of her body his fingers haven't touched. She also laments on how he stole her disciples and how he is destroying her utopia. She then vows that she's going to kill him no matter what it takes. Later at night, Gara gets treatment and he warns Dark Schneider not to be careless around Arsha's knee. He tells him that she has improved so much in the last 15 years. However, Dark Schneider asks Gara to focus on his improvement and not worry about him. Luckily for the city of Metalikana, they are in the rainy season and the Dark Army doesn't attack while it rains. The guards fix the walls of the castle and after that Yoko treats the guards to a meal. She uses that opportunity to give most of them words of encouragement. When it gets to Dark Schneider's turn, she gives him a very small quantity of soup. He tries his luck again for the second time. But the quantity of second time gets worse than the first time. Then Dark Schneider asks why he is being treated that way. Yoko tells him that it's because he was unfaithful to Arsha's knee, and that he took advantage of her by touching her. He then tells Yoko that she smells like a virgin and she smacks him for being naughty towards her. At night the great priest and the princess go to see an old sorcerer. She happens to be the one who made the seal put on Dark Schneider 15 years ago. The great priest asks him to help him examine the condition of the seal. He tells her that the seal has been broken three times by a virgin and that one time he broke the seal himself. Then the old woman examines the seal and sees that it is perfectly fine. She tells him that the seal is still in good contact. However, she explains to them that Dark Schneider can break the seal whenever the person he loves is in danger. The old woman tells them that the goddess of death and destruction would allow the seal to be broken by itself if she saw how pure his heart is. Then suddenly the old woman sees something else. She sees Dark Schneider's body lifeless without a heart. Meanwhile, Yoko attends to Gar and tends to his wounds later at night. Gara then discovers that she is lost in thought. He tells her that Dark Schneider and Ni use the same kind of magic. He says Dark Schneider is at advantage against Ni. He tells her that if two forces of the same type collides, it would generate a strong reaction and create a counterattack that would repel whichever force is the weaker and nullify them, which means they would get killed. He tells her that Ni lived with Dark Schneider for a hundred years while he had contact with her just 15 years ago. He tells her that has been ruthless ever since then but now he senses an unfamiliar gentleness which he has never seen before. Upon hearing this Yoko rushes out of the room. She wants to go and warn Dark Schneider about what she has just heard. Suddenly she sees Dark Schneider hugging Princess Sheila in her room and she hides from them seeing her. Due to the heavy downpour the Dark Army could not attack the city and the guards rested for a while from battle. 
Princess Sheila warns Dark Schneider from fighting against Arsha's knee. She tells him what she saw in the glass ball. Meanwhile, the old woman sees another sign that Arsha's knee's heart is burning with anger and hatred and it's consuming her soul. The old woman tells the great priest that there is no way on earth that Dark Schneider would survive the battle. The princess continues to beg him not to fight against Arsha's. She then tells him that the minister doesn't trust him and they think he might be plotting something terrible against the kingdom. She tells him that she believes he is a good man and that's why he saved them from danger. She tells him that she doesn't want to see him get hurt just for Metalakana's sake. Dark Schneider then laughs saying his only goal is to conquer the world. The glass ball of the old woman suddenly starts to misbehave it appears as though Empress Ni has arrived. Dark Schneider takes advantage of Princess Sheila and touches her. This makes Yoko very sad. Empress Ni lands on the castle and casts a spell and suddenly she blows up the castle. Empress Ni blows up the castle and luckily for Gara he escapes with few of his ninjas. He is surprised that Arsha is used to Megadeth. Megadeth is a spell that only Dark Schneider knows. Surprisingly Dark Schneider is able to protect Yoko, Princess Sheila and Lars from the destruction. Empress Ni then tells him that he will die by her hand. The knights observe the castle and see that it's the same thing that happened in the ninja fortress that happened there. Dark Schneider gets very angry over how Empress Ni destroys the castle as he is about to go fight her. Princess Sheila begs him not to go. Yoko also gets worried that Dark Schneider might hold back while against Empress Ni. Yoko also gets scared that Lucian might not come back again, however he promises them that he will make it and be sure to return. He tells them that he can't avoid the fight. Then Arsha's knee attacks Schneider with her griffin. Arsha's knee tells him that she's here to kill. Then they begin to fight. Dark Schneider activates a high mobility flying spell and flies toward Arsha's knee. She also tries to stop him using the high ancient spell. Schneider doesn't seem familiar with this kind of spell. She then creates a lighting that absorbs magic. She says it's like a bottomless pit connected to an alternate dimension. This dimension draws Schneider's magic and that makes him fall to the ground. Gara then decodes that Ni figured out that if they both use magic, they are going to die. So that's why she tries to shift the battle to a sword fight. Arsha's Ni tells Dark Schneider that she's going to attack from the top since his magic is now useless. Schneider tried to use his magic but the lighting ball absorb it all, thus she attacks him with the Raging Kin Sword. Dark Schneider gets helpless because there is nothing he can do, as she is about to finish him off. The demon god of fire Efreet appears to save Dark Schneider. The demon god tells Arshas that he will not allow her to lay her hands on his master without consequences. Ferret tells Dark Schneider that he will protect his master and that his sole duty is to protect and obey his master. Suddenly the demon god transforms into the fire sword. Empress Ni attacks Schneider, then he angrily strikes Arsha's griffin. The bird catches fire and crashes into a mountain. Empress Ni commends his effort on taming Efreet the demon god of fire. She then brags about her sword saying Efreet does not stand a chance against him one on one. Meanwhile the ninjas are surprised to see the legendary magic swords facing off in battle. However the ninja says that now that the bird is gone there will be an even match between Dark Schneider and Ni. Meanwhile Gara sees the situation in a different perspective. He tells them that determining who will be isn't based on strength but I'm experience. He says Schneider might have the stronger sword and tremendous physical strength, but unlike Arsha's Ni, she is a swordsman trained in the Harukan style of swordsmanship. Therefore she has a greater chance of victory. Then Ni attacks Dark Schneider with a Hayukan Thunder Claw Strike. Luckily he blocks it with a fire sword. Then the demon god sacrifices himself and disappears with the raging Kin sword into the lighting ball. The demon god sacrifices himself to give victory to Dark Schneider. Schneider gets angry saying he didn't ask him to sacrifice himself for his victory. Meanwhile Empress Ni takes advantage of the situation and stabs Schneider in his forehead with her knife hand. Everyone thinks he wouldn't survive it but suddenly he gets up and says he won't forgive Arsha's knee and that he is going to kill her. Then they begin to cast their spells at the same time. Then they attack each other at the same time and with the same spell. Dara is surprised to see that they are an even match and their thunder attacks are also equal in power. Empress Ni tells Dark Schneider that he is the first person she will face and her thunder attack will be on the same level with that person. Dara thinks that the two of them have to be very careful now that they know that their attacks are on the same level. He says that in their next attack if one person's power varies in speed then the person could be obliterated. Dark Schneider begins to cast the Exodus spell and he begins before Arsha's knee. That spell is the same spell he used to subjugate Efreet the demon god of fire. Empress Ni also begins her spell shortly after and they begin to get very serious. The force begins to intensify but Dark Schneider gets carried away by his emotions for a short while. Then they strike each other and this causes a huge explosion in the sky. Schneider falls to the ground meaning he is defeated by Empress Ni. Everyone gets shocked to see that she defeats Dark Schneider. Due to the smoke no one knows if he is alive or not. 
However, Yoko believes that he is still and he will return the money he borrowed from her. She says she raised him well right from small, because she taught Lucian to always return the money he borrows. The minister also gets sad because they realize that without Dark Schneider their kingdom will face a big threat from the Dark Rebel army. Dark Schneider suddenly resurrects from the ground, and everyone gets happy that he didn't die. All of a sudden he collapsed to the fall, he sustained so much injury from the Exodus attack. Empress Ni goes to meet him on the ground and tell him that since he doesn't have any strength left to fight, he will finish him and be a step closer to creating their own world. He tells her that she doesn't have what it takes to kill him, then she promises to prove to him that she has what it takes to kill him. As she is about to attack him he stops her and tells her that he loves her. She ignores him saying he falls in love with any woman he sets his eyes on. Then she casts the spell and summons the thunder spirits. Dara says that summoning the thunder spirits is like a double-edged sword, that if she loses control of the thunder spirit they might attack her too. Dark Schneider also summons his fire spirits, also called salamanders, then they begin to attack. The attacks get very intense and they chase each other around the castle. Schneider tells Empress Ni not to trust Kalsu. He tells her that is wants to conquer the world for himself and that she shouldn't believe whatever he says. Empress Ni tells Schneider that the Sorcerer Kingdom is a kingdom where magic rules, and a place without poverty and war. She says she will do anything to make that kingdom possible, meanwhile she attacks as salamanders. Dark Schneider then tells her that it's impossible to create a world with eternal peace. He tells her that war and hatred are just what makes up human beings here on Earth. Empress Ni explains that ever since she was young, she has been discriminated against in her village. She says that because she is a half-elf blood everyone didn't like to associate with her. She was bullied, insulted, despised, and hated. Ever since she was child her body has been covered in wounds. War broke out one day among her village then the dark elves took her but it was short while because she was abandoned eventually. Therefore that is why she is risking her life to build a new world where magic rules. Out of anger she tries to kill Schneider but luckily for him he waves the attack. He tells her that how can she forget that when she had no one he was the one who took her in and gave her a place where she could live in peace. He tells Arsis to remember how they were once family. She tells him that over the 15 years didn't forget how he took care of her for a hundred years. Empress Ni's heart melts over the thought of the past. Then the accused spell begins to work on her. Her fingernails change its color from blue to purple and it begins to eat her flesh. Empress Ni realizes that the accused spell is about to work on her. She then uses her powers to push Schneider away from her. Meanwhile Abigail and Kal Su watch Schneider and Arsha's knee fight from the demon castle. He tells Kal Su to see how her nails changed. It turns out she still has feelings for Dark Schneider. Abigail says that the more she opens her heart to Dark Schneider, the more the accused spell will strangle her. Abigail tells Kalsu that it won't be long until Arshas will betray the four divine kings and her body will be torn to pieces and she will become an ugly toad. Meanwhile, Kalsu loses interest in watching her die. He tells Abigail that if Ni perishes, then one of them will have to defeat Dark Schneider in her stead. Empress Ni attacks Dark Schneider with her thunder spirits, because she believes Dark Schneider is just trying to deceive and sway her with words. Then out of anger she strikes him so hard that everyone gets scared thinking that the damages will be much, and he might probably not survive it. She remembers what he said to her earlier, about her being his enemy and not his family anymore. She says that whenever they had a fight he always said that to her. She gets angry thinking he was just manipulating her over the years. She thinks that Dark Schneider just sees her as an ordinary elf girl, whereby he meant so much to her. She tells him that she won't forgive him for toying with her. She then hits again with a thunder punch. However, deep down in Empress Ni's heart she doesn't want to kill Dark Schneider, because she sees him like her father and lover. And for the fact that he took her in when she had no one to hold on to, then she whispers in heart that he should please perish. Because she couldn't handle the pain any longer, surprisingly Schneider lands back on his feet. Arshas gets sad seeing that he is still landing on his feet. Meanwhile the accused spell has already begun to work because she feels pity towards Schneider. Empress Ni loses control of the thunder spirits and they attack Yoko but luckily she is alright. Then the thunder spirit attacks Arsha's knee but she protects herself from the spirits. She then senses that Schneider is very concerned about Yoko, then she tells him to attack her and kill her, and then if she survives the attack she would kill Yoko. Upon hearing this dark Schneider gets very angry and prepares to attack Arsha's. He says he won't forgive whoever tries to hurt Yoko. Meanwhile the accused spell is about to destroy Empress Ni, so she has to kill Schneider on time by ripping his heart out. Then the two of them begin to fight against each other. The old woman alongside the great priest I severs their fight from a tower. She tells the great priest that Dark Schneider will be the one to lose the fight because she clearly saw his corpse in her vision, with his heart ripped out. She tells him that the outcome of the but she has already been decided. 
Dark Snader and Empress Ni cast the same spell. Gar is dumbfounded by how Empress Ni knows the ultimate spell of destruction. However, Empress Ni makes up her mind to die for Schneider and save him. Yoko realizes this and tries to stop them. But Gara stops her, saying she can't interfere, because they are always locked in a trance whenever they cast a spell. Dara tells Yoko that once a sorcerer casts a spell it has to go somewhere and that it has begun there's no way anyone can reverse it. Empress Ni makes a last wish, and says that she wishes Schneider can't hold her in his arms when she dies. Suddenly Lucian appears to Dark Schneider and tells him to open his eyes, to see that Empress Ni is suffering from a pain worse than death. He tells him that Arshas is doing this because she loves him so much. He says he should open his eyes and look at his precious daughter. Dark Schneider sees that she is suffering from the accused spell. Lucian tells him that she doesn't want to die by the curse nor does she want to kill him too. Lucian says that Empress Ni wishes to die by the hand of the one she loves. It is then Schneider realizes that it has all been Abigail's scheme. Suddenly Empress Ni collapses and her last words were I love. Then Dark Schneider screams out of pain because of what has happened to Arsha's Ni. Dark Schneider later transfers the spell somewhere else and saves Ni from the ultimate destruction. He tells her that he will save her from the accused spell. Surprisingly he suddenly rips out his heart. If you like this recap, do let me know in the comments, and obviously leave your likes too. Do not forget to share with your friends and subscribe. Above all, activate your notification bell so you don't miss the next recap when it drops. Until next time, do take care and stay safe.